The House will come to order. Prayer by the chaplain. Nice to see you again. Let's bow our heads and pray, shall we? Heavenly Father, I thank you for your promise to be with these representatives today because you know their needs and how inadequate that sometimes they feel when faced with the immense challenges that are placed before them. So help them to be wiser than they know and better than they are and stronger than they dream and give them courage to do what they feel in their heart is right. Thank you, God, for hearing this prayer. Amen. Thank you. The chaplain for today is Reverend Phil Shaw from St. Michael, Minnesota. Pledge of Allegiance. Please remain standing and recite the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. The clerk will take the roll.
wanted an answer on that last summer. Did we want it wired or not? The clerk will close the roll. A quorum is present. The clerk will read the journal of the preceding day. Journal of the House, 89th session, 24th day, St. Paul, Minnesota, Monday, March 9th, 2015. If there's no objection, further reading of the journal will be dispensed with and the journal will be approved as corrected by the chief clerk. Hearing no objection, the journal is approved as corrected by the chief clerk. Reports of standing committees and divisions. A copy of this order of business has been placed on each member's desk. If there's no objection, the reports will be adopted. Hearing no objection, the reports are adopted. Second reading of House Files. Second reading, House File number 385. Second reading. Second reading, House File number 497. Second reading. Second reading, House File number 794. Second reading. Second reading, House File number 1027. Second reading. Second reading, House File number 1075. Second reading. Introduction of bills. The following House Files have been offered for introduction today. The Chief Clerk will report the House Files and give them their first reading. Introduction to first reading of House Files 1664 through 1725. First reading, House Files 1664 through 1725. <clears throat> report from the Committee on Rules and Legislative Administration. Report from the Committee on Rules and Legislative Administration. Pepin from the Committee on Rules and Legislative Administration, pursuant to Rules 1.21 and 3.33, designates the following bills to be placed on the calendar for the day for Thursday, March 12, 2015, and establishes a pre-filing requirement for amendments offered to the following bills. House file numbers 417 and 239. Motions and resolutions. There are copies of the non-controversial motions on the House desk and, and online. If there's no objection, we'll take action on these motions first. Hearing no objection, the motions prevail. Newton moved that House file number 605 be recalled from the Committee on Education, Innovation, Policy and be re-referred to the Committee on Education, Finance. The member from Minoka, Representative Newton, to your motion. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chair and members. This uh, bill has to do with uh, school counselors and Chair Erickson and Chair Loon have agreed that it should go to education finance. Any further discussion on the motion? Any further discussion on the Newton motion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Those opposed, no. Motion prevails. Quam move that House File Number 648 be recalled from the Committee on Education, Innovation, Policy and be re-referred to the Committee on Education, Finance. The member from Olmsted, Representative Quam, to your motion. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Speaker and members. And I have talked to both committee chairs, and uh, both agree that it should go to the Education Finance Committee. Any discussion on the Quam motion? Hearing no discussion, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Those opposed, no. The motion prevails. Hansen moved that House file number 333 be recalled from the Committee on Ways and Means and be re-referred to the Committee on Environment, Natural Resources, Policy and Finance. The member from Dakota, Representative Hansen, to your motion. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I'd ask for a roll call on this. Representative Hansen requests a roll call. Seeing 15 hands, there will be a roll call. Representative Hansen. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This uh, bill, House File 333, uh, is an act relating to air pollution. Uh, the Pollution Control Agency accounts are in the Environment Committee. Uh, earlier in reports and standing committees, this was referred to Ways and Means. Uh, my motion is to recall it and move it to uh, Environment and Natural Resources Policy and Finance. Uh, in addition to the account issue, and there is a fiscal note for this drawing money, over 900,000 from the environmental fund, this bill deals with climate change. Climate change is a purview of the Environment Committee. Uh, this bill needs to go to the Environment Committee, and I'm asking the body to do so. 
The member from Sherburne, Representative Newberger. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I rise in opposition to this motion. Uh, this bill, House File 333, uh, is, is a procedural type of bill uh, that, that addresses how we are going to be dealing with a state implementation plan. Uh, yes, it, it deals with uh, energy. Uh, it deals with, um, with jobs, and we heard that bill already in committee. Um, this is not an environmental bill. This is a, uh, an energy policy bill, which we thoroughly vetted yesterday. Thank you. Any further discussion on the motion? The member from Dakota, Representative Hansen. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Would uh, Representative Newberger yield to a question? He will yield. Representative Hansen. Uh, Representative Newberger, uh, what is the cost for the bill? Representative Newberger. Uh, Representative Hansen, thank you. That's a good question, and thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, the cost of the bill is in question at this time. Uh, the uh, fiscal note that we got back was approximately $900,000. However, some of the cost of that bill is for, um, it's for expenses that the, the Pollution Control Agency is already, uh, it's for things that they are already doing. They're, it's like they're double dipping um, on this bill. The other, the other uh, problem that we had with the fiscal note on this bill was the Pollution Control Agency, they were the source for the fiscal note, yet the, the Pollution Control Agency, they're the ones that testified in opposition of the bill. So at this point in the game, I think that uh, having uh, any, uh, any hooks from the Pollution Control Agency, is, they've lost some credibility, is what they've done. So that's what I can say. The member from Dakota, Representative McNamara. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. I did talk with Representative Newberger and Representative Garofalo, and we don't need to hear the bell. That was four years ago than when we had energy in the committee. We no longer have energy. I would re uh, request you to vote no. The member from Hennepin, Representative Hortman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Members, this bill needs to go to environment for two reasons. One, the account is in Representative McNamara's area, but number two, it's about the implementation of the Clean Air Act. It's about air pollution. It relates to the environment. It needs to go to Representative McNamara's committee. Any further discussion on the motion? The member from Dakota, Representative Hansen. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I, I would uh, encourage people to look at the bill. It is an act relating to air pollution. An act relating to air pollution. The account on the fiscal note, and fiscal notes aren't a cafeteria where we can just pick and choose what we want to agree with. It's the fiscal note, $936,000, comes out of a pollution control agency account. That's the cost. In addition, climate change is one of the most important issues of our time. And this bill, House File 333, asks for legislative approval of the plan dealing with climate change. Climate change, climate change, climate change. It's in these accounts, it's in that committee, and it should go to that committee for consideration. Any further discussion on the Hansen motion? The member from Sherburne, Representative Newberger. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, again, this is an energy policy bill. This is not a pollution control bill. Uh, members, please vote no on this motion. The member from Hennepin, Representative Winkler. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Would Representative Newberger yield to a question? He will yield. Representative Winkler. Representative Newberg, is air part of the environment? Representative Newberger. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, thank you, Representative Winkler. That's a complex question and one that you uh, obviously know the answer to. Of course it is. Representative Winkler. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Well, Representative Newberger, you said that the air is part of the environment and this is an air pollution bill. This is a bill about polluting the environment. I think that Representative McNamara's committee is based on some regulation or deregulation of, of pollution of the environment. And I don't quite understand how anybody could stand up with a straight face on the floor and say that a bill that deals with air pollution doesn't have to go to the Environment Committee since air is part of the environment. Uh, and so, members, I guess it kind of begs the question of, I understand that the coal industry favors this bill, and the coal industry doesn't think that burning coal has an effect on the environment, but I think most Minnesotans do. So the question recurs yet again to the body. Do you want to follow the commands 
of an industry who has money to be made by moving a bill away from the Environment Committee, or do you want to do what's right for the state and follow basic common sense about environmental impacts of burning coal? And if you don't think that belongs in the Environment Committee, I'd suggest you get rid of the Environment Committee already. I mean, get rid of the Environment Committee anyway. The member from Sherburne, Representative Newberger. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Representative Winkler, I that was quite a rabbit trail that you took us down. Um, it's a one-paragraph bill, and maybe you should read it uh, before you um, before you address it on such a such a fashion. Um, it's a policy bill uh, for energy, and that's what it is. Uh, if you want to um, engage in, in other uh, conversations about energy policy or environmental policy, there'll be plenty of opportunity. Trust me. Thank you. The member from Hennepin, Representative Thiessen, to the Hanson motion. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I, I want to return the conversation back to, the, to that motion and the reason Representative Hanson is making the motion. I think there is a serious issue that we have to deal with uh, around um, the bill that Representative Newberger has brought forward. Uh, but the fact remains that the money that is being paid for this bill, the way that the, the work in this bill is being paid for, is in either out of the environmental fund, which I still believe, you can correct me if I'm wrong, Representative McNamara, that's still within the jurisdiction of your committee, or it's money going to the MPCA, and I believe the MPCA's budget is still within your committee, Representative McNamara. It would Representative McNamara just yield to that question, just to confirm that both the environmental fund he will and yield. the MPCA budget is within the jurisdiction of his committee? Representative McNamara. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and yes, Representative Thiessen and the members, uh, the MPCA and the Environmental Fund is in the purview of our committee, and I would ask members to vote red on this motion. Thank you, Representative Thiessen. Representative Thiessen. <laughs> and see, here we go again, members. First of all, we have Representative Newberger challenging the credibility of a fiscal note, which again, as we talked about before, sent us down the rabbit hole, I guess, if you want to use that word, of getting the government shut down in 2011. That's one of the fundamental reasons we got there in 2011, and I'm worried that we're heading down that, that same path again. You know, I'm worried, you know, in 2011, we saw in the Health and Human Services Committee, Representative Abler save $400 million by just saying, Department of Human Services, save $400 million. That's how you balance your budget. That's not how we do things there. It's not the responsible way, and we were left with a budget deficit, record borrowing from our schools, borrowing $700 million in tobacco bonds as a result of that kind of budgeting. And here we're going again, members. Let's not do that. And Representative McNamara just answered the question, not when he said vote red, but when he actually answered the substance of my question. The accounts that are related to this bill, whether it's a general fund appropriation to MPCA or whether it's an appropriation out of the environmental fund, are in Representative McNamara's budget committee. How can he not see that bill and include it before it goes to Ways and Means? I mean, this is simple, members. The answer to this, whatever you believe about the merits of Representative Newberger's bill, and I will again say I think there are serious issues that we need to address around the issues. I don't know that his answer is the right answer, but there are serious issues that need to be addressed around 11D and the issues associated with. But setting that aside, what we need to do is actually have these bills heard in the proper committees and in the budget areas where they're heard. So I would encourage you to vote green. There's no rush to get this done. That's going to take an extra three days, member. Representative McNamara can, can schedule the bill in his, in his committee. You can have the discussion in that committee, and we can move that on to ways and means if that's the way the committee decides. But there's no rush to move this forward. But at the very least, we should at least follow the proper procedure on this one. So I would encourage a green vote on this bill or on this motion. Any further discussion on the Hansen motion? Seeing no further discussion, the clerk will take the roll. The clerk will close the roll. There being 55 ayes and 73 nays, the Hansen motion does not prevail. 
Hackbarth moves that House File Number 1594 be recalled from the Committee on Mining and Outdoor Recreational Policy and be re referred to the Committee on Transportation Policy and Finance. The member from Anoka, Representative Hackbarth, to your motion. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Speaker. Uh, this, I've I spoke to both chairs, and they agree that this bill should be in the Transportation Committee. It uh, has to do with uh, putting safety training identification on your driver's license. Any discussion on the Hackbarth motion? Seeing no discussion, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Those opposed, no. The motion prevails. Announcements. The member from St. Louis, Representative Metza. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I just wanted to thank all the members and staff who were able to attend the Ranger Party last night. Uh, it was a fun night, so thank you very much. We'll look forward to it in another few years here. The member from Mille Lacs, Representative Erickson. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, and the members of uh, Education Innovation Policy. We will resume meeting in Room 5 at 6 p.m. Thank you. The member from Hennepin, Representative Thiessen. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I have a point of parliamentary inquiry. State your point of parliamentary inquiry. So uh, we just received a, a report, members, um, from the Department of Revenue that taxes, uh, tax rates are actually decreasing uh, for nine out of the 10 deciles. So 90% of Minnesotans, except for the very top 10%, uh, between 2012 and 2017, their taxes, because of changes we made in the last legislative session, among other things, uh, are actually going down uh, in Minnesota. Their tax rates are going down for nine of the 10. Uh, and I know that there was a lot of discussion in the last campaign, and there's been discussion on the House floor since, uh, since the November election during this session, talking and people making comments that taxes went up on every, on every Minnesotan uh, as a result of the last. So I guess my parliamentary inquiry, uh, now that members know this fact, uh, and this report has come out. My parliamentary inquiry is, is there a point of order I can rise to when someone rises and says that taxes went up on every Minnesotan because of the last uh, legislative session, knowing now that that's actually a false statement? Representative Thiessen, in response to your point of parliamentary inquiry, uh, you know, obviously it's, it's the uh, uh, custom and usage of this body that a member can raise a point of order uh, for anything. Uh, ultimately, the, the presiding officer will rule whether that point of order is valid or not. That can be overridden by the body. I would invite you to look at the Minnesota Constitution, the House rules, the joint rules, custom and usage, Minnesota statutes, and Mason's manual in that order to see if you feel like anything that's said here on the House floor is in violation of any of those. Any further announcements? Thank you, Representative Mr. Thiessen. Yeah, and uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I was also just wondering um, if Representative Pepin would yield for a question. She will yield, Representative Thiessen. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, so. In the next couple of weeks, uh, I know the budget uh, targets are coming out, uh, I, as I understand it. I think by the 24th or 25th, they'll have to be out. 
so I've, uh, I'll ask a couple of questions and then maybe she can answer. One is, do we know what date those budget targets are going to be coming? And secondly, in light of this report showing that tax, effective tax rates actually went down for 90% of Minnesotans uh, as a result of, the, of things that have happened in Minnesota after the last couple years, um, and in light of the fact that now the Republicans have put in bills totaling over $2.5 billion in spending, I will give Representative Driscowski some credit. He has entered two bills that actually cut spending by about $12 million, I think. Uh, but $2.5 billion in new spending has been put in, including a bill today, uh, as I understand it, that would essentially um, eliminate personal responsibility that, any, that people have for their children and socialize, completely socialize the costs of taking care of dis uh, disabled kids uh, in Minnesota. Even for people making a million dollars, they wouldn't have to pay a single dime uh, to take care of their own children. Roz Peterson has that bill that she put in. Uh, it's interesting, uh, for coming from a Republican, a bill to actually socialize uh, the cost of uh, those costs, but uh, I applaud your efforts. Um, but the bottom line, you put in $2.5 billion worth of spending bills, a little bit of cuts from Representative Driskowski. Uh, we know now that tax rates actually, effective tax rates actually went down for 90% of Minnesotans. So I'm wondering if that's the reason you've been so resistant to joining uh, your party chair, uh, Keith Downey, and others, and Representative Driskowski, among others, on calling to return the entire surplus back to Minnesotans because now you know that uh, that entire surplus, that actually tax rate, tax, effective tax rates went down for most Minnesotans. And so you're seeing the wisdom of the work that we did over the last two years and you want to actually want to spend the $2.5 billion uh, in new spending that you've proposed uh, in the last several weeks here in Minnesota. So the first question is, are we going to see the budget targets coming out soon? And secondly, uh, is this $2.5 billion in spending, meaning the speaker was wrong when he said the majority of the uh, major the vast majority, in fact, I think, of the budget surplus was going to go for tax cuts, uh, or is it going to actually be spent on these priorities that your members have put in totaling $2.5 billion? The member from Hennepin, Representative Pepin. Thank you, Mr. Uh, speaker and uh, Representative Thiessen for your questions. I would draw your attention to... Rule 4.03, the Ways and Means Committee budget resolution, within 25 days after the last state general fund revenue, we must get the budget resolution together. So we can look for that by the 25th. I imagine it would be to rule some time in that area to the 24th. So that would be your question. You will be seeing that very shortly. About your, um, your other question about taxes going down, I just want to remind everybody that in 2013, taxes went up by 2.1% billion dollars and the proposals that were put forward by the Democrats were outrageous. We had snack tax proposal, we had gas tax, we had the warehouse tax, we had the farm equipment repair tax, tax after tax after tax after tax after tax. So, um, and I might also point out Representative Thiessen that uh, the Department of Revenue just pointed out that property taxes went up uh, by 3.4 percent under your leadership. So we might want to maybe you want to talk to Representative Marquardt about why under your leadership property taxes went up by 3.4 percent. So Representative Thiessen, we will hear bills that come before us and we will put together a responsible budget and we will have the information by the 25th. The member from Hennepin, Representative Thiessen. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, well, I appreciate that. I, I think it was $1.6 billion in taxes and in fact uh, property taxes went down for homeowners for businesses uh, and total uh, for, for, for homeowners and businesses in Minnesota as a result of the last two years. And we can get that for you. And in fact, they went up significantly more by close to $500 million under your leadership in 2011 and 2012 and significantly less to the extent they went up under what we did over the last two years. In fact, one of the reasons that that tax incident study cites for taxes going down on 90% of Minnesotans is because of the direct property tax that we provided to Minnesotans. Um, so you should look actually at the numbers. We can provide those to you, Representative, uh, Representative Pepin. Um, and to the other taxes that you talked about, what we raise taxes on ultimately members is taxes on the, four, uh, on the top 2%, uh, cigarette taxes and closing corporate loopholes. That's what the, taxes, uh, the tax increases were. You can talk about a lot of other things, but that's what they were. And if you want to repeal any of those, you certainly can go ahead and do it. The fact is, I don't know that there's even been a bill necessarily put in. It certainly hasn't been a hearing on any of those bills. So, you know, the speaker loves to say, you know, do what you, you know, a lot of people, too many people around here do what they, 
What does he say? <laughs> Too many people around here say one thing and do another thing. Uh, I feel like that's what you're doing. You know, maybe that's just par for the course, but I think you should uh, listen to the wisdom of your speaker uh, and actually do what you said you were going to do. That's what Keith Downey did today. You know, whether you like it or not, Keith Downey's being honest with the people of Minnesota. He knows that in November of 2014, October of 2014, and Representative Drakowski, I'll give him credit again, he also is, is sticking by this. You said, we ought to give the whole thing back. We spent too much, we ought to give the whole thing back. I'm not hearing that from the rest of your members, even though that's what you said on the campaign trail. So if you want to uh, follow the words of your speaker uh, and actually do what you said you're going to do, uh, you should listen to your party chair, Keith Downey. Uh, if not, uh, then I guess we can have a different kind of discussion. But at the end of the day, if you don't do that, what you're doing is affirming the work that we did over the last two years. You're saying what we did over the last two years is right, that the investments we made in education, all that wasteful spending in education, all that wasteful spending uh, in higher education, freeing tuitions, all that education, Representative Cretia, in broadband investment, all that wasteful spending in any number of things, in, in a 5%, an increase in 5% uh, for actually more than that, close to 9% actually for nursing home workers over about two and a half years. All that wasteful spending should be given back, should be turned back. But what you're doing, what you're proposing, is actually to do all those things and do more of it. So if you want to embrace what we did over the last two years, we will stand there with you and do that uh, because we think what happened over the last two years is right. But if you want your words on the campaign trail and, in, and continuing rhetoric in this session to match up with your actions, I suggest you listen to Representative Dreskowski, listen to your chair, uh, Keith Downey, and do what he said. The member from Carver, Representative Hoppe. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I'm not sure if I'm rising to a point of parliamentary inquiry or a privilege of the House. But, and I'll let you or the presiding officer or the body decide. But I would remind the minority leader and all members on both sides of the aisle that every one of us deserves the same respect and should be addressed as Representative Thiessen or Representative Hoppe. And I find it a little bit troubling that we're going after Republican freshmen, as I would any freshman, and not addressing them with the title that they deserve. So I think it is uh, something we just all need to be cautious of as we go forward. And again, Mr. Speaker, again, not rising to a point, maybe a privilege of the House, gentle reminder to the minority leader and to all of us. Thank you. Any further announcements, or any announcements? The member from Dakota, Representative McNamara. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, we will now bring the uh, House Environment and Natural Resources uh, Finance and Policy Committee back to order at 5.30. Um, to the members here, we are hearing uh, Representative Torkelson's House File 1534, or more commonly called Governor Dayton's Buffer Bill is before the committee tonight, so I would encourage any people at our board looking for something to do, you can uh, come and listen to us talk about buffers. The member from Hennepin, Representative Pepin. Mr. Speaker, I move that when the House adjourns today, it adjourns until 12.15 p.m. on Wednesday, March 11th, 2015. Representative Pepin moves that when the House adjourns today, it adjourns until 12.15 p.m. on Wednesday, March 11, 2015. All those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. no. The motion prevails. Representative Pepin. I move that the House do now adjourn. Representative Pepin moves that the House do now adjourn. All those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. no. The motion prevails, and the House stands adjourned until 12.15 p.m. Wednesday, March 11, 2015.